I received a question on Instagram at Andy Hill MKM from David. So here it is, everybody. Andy, my wife and I are turning 30 next year, and we love the idea of retiring by 40. We're debt free. We make $120,000 combined, and we live on $50,000 a year. So we are making a lot of money, and we are saving a lot of money. What steps can we take to retire by 40? David, thank you very much for reaching out on Instagram. I really appreciate that. Touch and base there again, everybody. That's Andy Hill MKM on all social media platforms if you've got a question for me. But uh, I've been interviewing a lot of financially independent folks over the past four years that I've been doing this show, and I've definitely learned a lot. But I thought it would be more fun to bring in a guest who's actually retired early. So to help me answer David's question today, I'm happy to be joined by online entrepreneur, writer, and early retiree Steve Adcock. Steve's writings on financial independence and happiness have been been featured on major media sites like CBS, Market Watch, Forbes, Business Insider, CNBC, and Vice. So for those of you who've been listening for a long, long time, you may remember that we interviewed Steve back in 2017 about how he retired at 35 years old. You can find that episode at marriagekidsandmoney.com slash session 13. Yeah, that's how long ago it was, session 13. And I'm so glad to have him back today. Welcome to the show, Steve. Thank you so much for having me, Andy. I'm glad to be back. Absolutely, man. Well, it's been too long. I know we've hung out in person quite a bit over those years, but I'm yep. glad to have you here today to help help me and help David out with this question. So let's talk about David's question first. What steps should David take to hit this goal of retiring by 40? Well, first of all, I have to offer my congratulations for even having that goal because just being able to understand the fact that this is possible for a lot of people, that is an amazing initial realization. Um, and really putting things into place, that's where the rubber meets the road. And what I, I like to break financial independence down into a few basic, uh, I guess, categories. The idea behind building wealth is you have two different income sources that comes primarily from your salary and from your investments. So those two things build wealth. Your lifestyle reduces wealth. So income plus investments minus lifestyle, that is how much money you have. That is how you build wealth. So as you think about financial independence and maybe even early retirement, you you should keep those basic principles in mind so you know what's going to add to your wealth and subtract from it. A lot of people focus on the income part and uh, David's combined 120 k a year. That's great. That's wonderful. Spending only 50 50 grand a year. That's also wonderful. But what I would advise David to do in this situation is take a really, really good guess about what early retirement is going to look like for him. And that will give him a really good baseline. For example, does he want to travel more? Does he want to sell his house and retire to an RV like, like I did? Or maybe move to a higher cost of living area or a lower cost of living area? Whatever that looks like, that's going to give you a pretty good baseline based on what you're spending now about what you will probably anticipate spending later on. And with that in mind, you could start making way more intelligent decisions with your life. So if you're 30 now, you want to retire at 40, that's 10 years. So you are in the prime of your money making career, man. This is it. This is where the magic happens. So I would really encourage you to never say no to opportunities to build wealth. If that's a promotion that that might add a little bit more responsibility, uh, really consider that. Na yes, naturally, you don't want to hate your life. You don't want to hate what you do for a living because that's not worth it. Um, but really, this is where you're going to make the majority of your money. So be that yes man, but in a positive sense, not the negative sense. Be be a, be a yes man. Just get in, get yourself out there and make your really get involved with as many opportunities as you can because you never know what's going to come from those. Yeah, it sounds it sounds like he's got a good level of income right now, and if he can grow that even more and enjoying his life along the way, that's that's great. That's a great thing to do. So let's talk about what he's going to do with this money. So he's making more. He's, got, he's he's obviously grown the gap between the income and the expenses. That's a great starting point. What do you do with the money then to get to early retirement? 
That, that's right. And that, that's, that's the middle part of that wealth building equation. So income plus investments. So I would really highly encourage you with whatever you make, however you make it, invest the large majority of that income, whether it's long term uh, retirement accounts like a 401k or an IRA, health savings accounts with a high deductible insurance plan. That's a really good option for a lot of people. Not everyone's qualified for an HSA, but but if you are, definitely consider that because your growth is tax free. And if you don't use that money by 65, it acts basically like a retirement account and you, you can extract that money as if it were in a, a 401k. So that's a really good option. Um, we use Vanguard brokerage accounts um, when when we were in this lead up to early retirement ourselves. That really added a lot. We, we saved about 70% of our income. David's saving about 50%, which is um, after taxes, which is what it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful percentage to, to, to be at. But your checking account and your savings account is not how you build wealth. Your investments are how you build wealth. The only exception to that is if you do not have an emergency fund of at least six months, most personal finance advisors advise three to six months. I like to go that extra step and say six months. So if you lose your job tomorrow, how long can you live your life without having to sell your house or eat rice and beans for a living? Um, that I think will will give you the confidence to start making um, maybe different changes with how you earn income and saying yes to more opportunities, even though there might be some kind of risk involved there, the better your fallback, the easier it's going to be to start taking a little bit more risk maybe while you're young to really build that income up, get those investments going, um, minimize that lifestyle, which it looks like you already have done um, so you can hit that market 40. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So you talked about the things like the 401k, the IRA, the HSA. If he gets to 40, how can he use those things that are you know, sort of uh, meant for traditional retirement. I know there's fees and penalties and things like that. How does, how does he get around that or should he be investing in other ways? There are ways to get around it. Um, 401ks and IRAs are traditionally long-term retirement accounts that you can take when you're 65. Um, but there's like the Roth uh, backdoor ladder where you can start taking money out of your 401k through your Roth IRA early without penalty. There's substantially equal periodic payments, I think it is. Um, so there, there are some loopholes to get at that money sooner. But I would highly encourage you not to depend on that because you want that money later because that's what it's meant for. That's why it's there. It's it's there for your traditional your traditional retirement age. Um, so you really don't want to assume that that's going to um, be available, I, um, I guess, when you're 40. Passive income and side hustles, those are two wonderful options to boost your cash flow now, but also start making some money after you quit your job. And that's what, what my wife and I did. We have you know the YouTube channel, why freelance right? I do a, a number of different things that bring in a little money here and there. And when your expenses are low, when your lifestyle is minimized to such a degree, a hundred bucks a week, that's meaningful. Right now it might not be as meaningful, but when you're only spending, I don't know, 30 grand, 40 grand a year, that hundred dollars means so much more to you and you don't have to work as hard once you get to 40 to start bringing in just a little bit of extra cash uh, to to make your lifestyle a little bit more enjoyable um, and and easier to live so side hustles that you can build now that you're not gonna say oh I'll I'll, I'll do that later you know once I retire then I'll do that nine times out of ten that just doesn't Happen. So start experimenting now while you have the job. So if things don't work out, it doesn't really matter because you have your full time income. So if you start doing those things now, we get a feel for what you're going to like to do. That's really going to set you up to earn a little bit of income after retirement. Got it. Got it. And you talked about passive income sources. Would that be things like through a taxable brokerage or real estate? How, how would we get those? It, it could be it could be real estate. It could be dividend investing. I mean, those those are the two big ones. Um, I, I suppose if you started a business and, and and sold it and you get residual payments, that would be wonderful too. But we're not all that uh, that lucky, and I'm I'm certainly a, a part of that. Most side hustles are not passive because you really have to 
actively work to build those those hustles up and maintain them. So I would not consider almost any side hustle uh, to be passive. In my view, passive is dividend real estate, maybe in some rental properties here and there. Uh, but even then, that's not totally passive because there's renovations and things you, you have to do every once in a while. But for the most part, you're not going into the office every single day to earn that that passive income. We don't have a lot of passive income. Most of what we do is active, um, but but I know a lot of people out there who choose the more passive route, and there's certainly nothing wrong with that. Got it, got it, yeah. So let's talk about your situation a little bit. I know we, we spent a lot of time talking uh, three or four years ago on the show, and you guys were in the midst of traveling around the country in an RV after you had you know, decided to say goodbye to the nine to five. So where are you now? <laughs> well, it's interesting. We bought a 100% off grid house in the Southern Arizona desert. We did travel around full time for three years. We sold both of our homes and just lived in the Airstream. So we did the travel. Um, but I was kind of, I wanted to stretch my wings a little bit. It was a little bit cramped in there. It was a 200 square foot Airstream. So it's good. It's going to be small. And I guess I was tired of sharing my office with the kitchen. And I, yeah, I wanted a more traditional office space, some, some room to spread out a little bit. So that's really what sparked my interest in maybe getting some property and maybe even a house on that property. And this was last year. And we had obviously no idea that COVID-19 was going to hit. And the, the, the freedom of owning property and a little off-grid house out in the middle of the desert while all this is happening, it was completely dumb luck, but we timed it perfectly. It could not have worked out any better. Yeah, talk about uh, staying away from from individuals or, or social distancing, right? That's the ultimate social distancing. <laughs> exactly, and when we yeah, when you're out there, social distancing is a way of life. We have a neighbor; our nearest neighbor is probably a quarter of a mile away, but then the next nearest neighbor is probably two or three miles. Um, so we have to work to see people. We have to go out of our way to become, you know, get within six feet of another person. So that's 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 kind of nice. That's wild. <laughs> so off grid. Home. How do you, I mean, uh, talk to me about how do you get power then? How does that work? Yeah, power, we have solar. So renewable energy directly on property. We have 3,700 watts of solar on poles, big metal poles that we can rotate all the solar panels so it points right at the sun. Um, that feeds into our patch panel. Inside, we have four 48-volt lithium batteries um, that power our house when the sun's down. So those batteries charge, um, when the sun's up and the, and the solar panels are bringing in power, we have more than enough power for all of our camera equipment, our, our, uh, computers, even an air conditioner, a little portable AC that just sits on the floor. Um, it even powers that just fine. So it's really, it's, it's, it's a really nice little setup. We also don't have water like city water, um, but we rain harvest. So whenever it rains, falls on our roof, funnels into gutters and into a couple of really big water tanks that we proceed to filter three or four times before it gets into our house and into our cups for, for drinking. So it is it is really cool or to live, I guess, a very, very sustainable sustainable life. And we're not environmentalists. We just kind of fell into this, but we found that it's worked out really well for us. So you're, you're frugal folks, and then you fell into the eco life because of the frugality <laughs> and the need for it. So you're now eco frugal. <laughs> we are eco. I like that. I, no, no, I love that. Andy. We are eco, eco frugal completely by accident, but it's working and we are, we are, we are running with this as long as we can. Oh, I love that, man. Cool. Well, talk to me a little bit about the, the ways you found to make some income in early retirement. You talked about the importance of getting a side hustle and doing work that you like. And, you know, you talk about happiness a lot too. So you mentioned camera equipment and computers. Tell me what you're doing now, you and Courtney, to, to make a little bit of dough. Um, well, we've we've had a YouTube channel for the longest time. Really, ever since we set sail traveling, we started the YouTube channel. It's called A Stream in Life. And that chronicled our travel journeys through, you know, in, in the Airstream. We have a little over 17,000 followers now. Not bad. Um, but I also do a lot of freelance writing with, you know, CNBC and market watch and ladders and th those kinds of publications, which I really enjoy doing more, way more than I 
thought I was going to enjoy. But the more I got into it, the more I liked it. So I, um, I really take advantage of all those opportunities whenever I can. Um, Courtney has started a yarn or a, a knitting pattern business where she sells patterns, not the finished product, just the patterns to knitters. And she donates 51% of those profits to, to charity with everything she sells. So that's her way of making money and also giving back at the same time. So that that balance really, really works out well for her. And and lastly, I uh, I started I, I wrote an ebook. It's called Big Money. I donate um, – well, this month I'm donating 100 percent of all revenue to a charity that helps um, women, people of color enter the information technology business. And that is the business that enabled us to accumulate all this wealth. So it's the least I, I can do to at least try to pay it forward um, so other people can follow into my footsteps as well. So all of, all of those things combined, it's not getting us rich, maybe a couple thousand a month. Um, but like I said before, when you're only spending 30 or 35K a year, a couple thousand a month, that's darn good. Yeah, absolutely. That could be a lot of money. What's the organization that you mentioned? I'd love to put it in the show notes for people to consider donating as well. It's called Black Girls Code. Awesome. Very, very to the point. They they don't mince words with their name. It's very direct. Um, but yeah, that's that's exactly what they do. And we're, we're certainly glad to help there. That's incredible. I love how you're giving back in that way, especially for the way that you earned your living and grew your wealth. That's that's an incredible way to, to do it. So Steve, thank you so much for being here. One question before we go. There's sure. somebody listening right now. And, you know, maybe they're not making much as much as David. He, they hear he's making $120,000. Uh, maybe they're making sub hundred thousand dollars. Is is early retirement a possibility for somebody like that? And if so, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, I, I would say early retirement is possible for more people than you think. It might not be for thirty five like me. It might not be for forty like David. It might be fifty five, but that's still early retirement. And the earlier that you can start putting these pieces into place, especially when it comes to downsizing your lifestyle, really taking a look at all of your monthly expenses, what means the most to you, especially those monthly subscription fees like magazines and cable that you don't really know or you don't realize are coming out of your, your bank account, but they are every single month. And the problem is you don't have to lift a finger for that to happen. It just happens. So going through those bank statements and those credit card statements, cutting out what's not completely meaningful uh, to you, um, really saying yes to all of your opportunities, that's going to give you the best chance of boosting that income, which gives you the money to invest and really build your wealth as you downsize your lifestyle. You put those pieces into place, and I think you're going to find that you will hit financial independence earlier than you think think. And it really, I mean, this, this, this snowballs exponentially and the magic just gets more and more, I don't know, um, exciting. Absolutely. That, uh, that compound interest, it's uh, pretty magical, right? <laughs> it really is. It really is. It's math, but it's also magic, which is weird to say in the same sentence, but yeah. I love it. I love it. We're, we can combine all these words, mathagical and uh, eco-frugal. It'll be great. We'll Equal be... frugal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We, we, we are trendsetters today. That's yeah. right. That's, we're making up new <laughs> words. Oh, awesome, Steve. This has been great. Thank you so much for being here. You mentioned your new ebook. Where can people get that? And then where can people follow you and connect with you? Well, my, my ebook, um, I, I, it will probably be linked in the show notes below. It's on, it's at Gumroad. It's a, it's a platform to download ebooks like that, but it's called big money. You'll, you'll find it down below on Twitter. My handle is Steve on speed and I blog at Steve us. Perfect, man. Thank you so much for being here. I, I, it's great to connect yeah. again and I'm, I'm, I'm bummed. It's been three years and I'm glad we did it today. <laughs> totally. Yep. Me too. Glad to do it. Thanks for having me, Andy. <laughs> 